Adriana and I'm here with Leonardo and today we are dealing with this iPhone XS that neither charges nor turns on. As you can see the consumption shown on our laboratory power supply is minimal. We will proceed to disassemble it to identify the problem. Disassembling this device requires the removal of two torque screws at the bottom of the chassis. Subsequently, we'll use a suction cup to create an opening and, with the help of the plastic pick, we cut through the adhesive. Once inside, we'll remove the screws and the protective shield. Our focus today won't be so much on the disassembly, but rather on the repair process. After removing the motherboard, we'll proceed with the visual inspection. This step is fundamental in our process. It's crucial to thoroughly examine the motherboard, paying special attention to the joint of the two motherboards. We'll use a 90x Amscope microscope for a more detailed inspection. It seems that the foamy protection has been exposed to a certain temperature. We must keep in mind these details. This flux on the FPC connector catches my eyes. It seems that the device has been tampered with before. Here we have a damaged plastic connector. The junctions of motherboards also concerns me. It shows signs of manipulation. We continue observing and noting any anomaly found. In this way, we are going to reach a good conclusion. Next, we remove the foam protection from the connectors. To separate the motherboards, we use this machine that operates at 220 Celsius degrees. It's essential to avoid excessive force during this process. The trick is not to exert too much force when we're separating the motherboards. Do it gently or softly. It can even be done with a plastic spatula. After removing the top part, we'll cool them down using a computer fan. In the description of this video, you'll find the link of the machine to separate these motherboards. With the help of the microscope, we look for possible faults on the motherboard. We can see that the solder bolts are fine, we haven't lost any pads.
We observe that the thermal paste is not correctly applied. Something has happened here. We need to inspect further. This damage is the product of the overheating. We use a thermal camera to analyze the motherboard. Here we have intermittent consumption, right in this area. Honestly, we've got a good thermal camera, but if you are a beginner and you don't have money to invest, you can use the rosin technique, which can cost you less than 20 cents. There are many tutorials on the internet. We apply a little bit of flux, heat it up and then we check. Thorough cleaning with isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner is a key point in the repair process. Then we connect site A to a power laboratory source to see what happens. I have an image on the screen, so I'll use the eSocket tool to join the two motherboards without soldering them. Having these tools helps us a lot when we are offering a good diagnosis. It's important to have this union flex to facilitate the connection of the screen to the motherboard. We can see that this tool makes it a little bit complicated to connect the screen flex. As a general rule, this union flex comes inside the box when you are buying the e-socket. We've identified the problems by conducting a detailed inspection and taking the necessary measures to restore the device functionality. Device repair may seem complex, but with the right tools and knowledge, it's a process that can be carried out effectively. Remember, it's essential to have a good understanding of each step and tool used in this process. As with any other form of repair, patience, precision and attention 
attention to detail are the key. We hope this video helps you better to understand the repair process and assist you if you encounter similar issues with your device. After connecting all the flexes, we turn on the device. After conducting some checks, we rebolt the integrate circuit, we join the two motherboards and we assemble the device. We won't linger with the process because we have many videos on our YouTube channel. Finally, we perform some additional checks to verify if we have network, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working correctly. As you can see, everything is ok. Guys, I hope this iPhone XS repair video tutorial has been useful and educational for you. He is Leonardo, we hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new and we are waiting for you in the next one. Bye bye! Con el fin de mejorar para ti la atención y la propuesta comercial, grabaremos y analizaremos esta llamada. Puedes informarte sobre nuestra política de...